Ambulance is go for per sequence four. Copy that. And Garrett, we have to see the start of the play recorder, please. Ambulance is go for at least two plus two seconds.
like to what day? Uh, oh, when... Uh It's great to have flight hardware arriving here at the Kennedy Space Center for the Artemis I mission. We are going to have boots on the moon by 2024 in this first test flight of Artemis I. This sets the stage for the crewed flights that follow. So uh, I can't wait to see these motor segments arrive. This, this solid rocket motor, it, it's 17 stories tall. It's five segments, not four like the shuttle. 3.6 million pounds of thrust in each one. This is going to be awesome, and uh, we're going to be ready here at KSC. So as far as being able to launch Artemis 1, 
we got to get that core stage here. So we need it to complete its testing at the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. Once that's complete, you know, we're ready here at KSC. We'll get the solid rocket motors here. The Orion crew module has already been through its testing up at the Glenn Research Center at the Plumbrook facility up there, passed its tests with flying colors. It's in storage over in the operations and checkout building. So once we know that the core stage is on its way, we'll have the solid rocket motor stacked. We'll get the core stage here and stack it, and then we'll add the upper stage and the command service module on top of that. Okay? So how do we do that? We do that with various processing facilities that we need here at KSC that we have ready. We've got High Bay 3 in the Vehicle Assembly Building with all its platforms, and the mobile launcher is in there now. It's completed its verification and validation testing. Uh, all we need is a rocket to start stacking it, okay? The Orion uh, Command Service Module, it's in storage now, but it's going to go to the uh, facility where we fuel it, all right? And once it gets fueled, it goes over and gets the abort motor stuck on top. And then that whole stack goes out to the VAB to get stacked, okay? A separate stack, all right? Uh, the solid rocket motors, the facilities that we need to process them before they come over into the VAB to get stacked, those are all complete and ready to go. Uh, we obviously have to launch it, so that means the launch control center has to be ready. Firing room one. Uh, Charlie Blackwell Thompson and her team over in the firing room, NASA's first female launch director, she's already running launch simulations over there. Well, we got one more software load we have to have in order to launch the rocket. We've got what we need for testing as the pieces arrive, but we got to have that launch software. That load has been complete. It's gone through verification and validation testing, and they're getting ready to uh, complete it and be able to use it in simulations now also. The launch pad, the launch pad's ready to go. It's been totally refurbished to support SLS and Orion. So all the infrastructure that's necessary to process and launch this vehicle, and that's an awful lot, here at the Kennedy Space Center, is ready to go. You get us a rocket and we'll get it launched on time. So what happens next here at the Kennedy Space Center is as the solid rocket motor segments arrive, they get offloaded from the rail cars and they get stored until we're ready to stack them. We're not going to start stacking them on the mobile launcher in High Bay 3 until we know that the core stage has successfully completed its green run at the Stennis Space Center in Mississippi. Once we know that, then we know the core stage is going to be on its way and we can start stacking the solid rocket motor segments on the mobile launcher that's going to carry the rocket out to the pad for launch. So actually this is very similar to how we process the shuttle. The first thing we have to do is stack the solid rocket motor segments and build the two rocket motors on the mobile launcher. Once that's complete, then the core stage arrives on the Pegasus barge from the Stennis uh, center in Mississippi after its testing. It rolls into the transfer aisle, gets lifted up and lowered down into the high bay, and it gets bolted to the solid rocket motors. For shuttle, it was the external tank that came over on the barge, was lifted up, lowered down, and bolted to the solid rocket motors. And then it, it served as the structural backbone that held the solid rocket motors and the orbiter together when it got bolted on. Well, there's no orbital to bolt on anymore. Once the core stage is bolted to the solid rocket motors, then we bring on the upper stage and the crew module and command service module and attach to that. Obviously, it's, it's a key component of our multi-user spaceport because we support both government and commercial launches to and from low Earth orbit and beyond. And the Artemis program is going to be that government program that takes us beyond, that allows us to explore beyond our home planet. We want to create a commercial environment in low Earth orbit and be one of many customers to space stations, to rides up to the International Space Station, and so on. All right? And that allows us to do that hard job of exploring beyond our home planet, of getting boots on the moon in 2024 with the next man and first woman. And once we've established operations on the moon, the, the real goal is getting to Mars, allowing us to go on to Mars. SLS, Orion, the Artemis program is what enables us to do that.